Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's the trade of the day, the Friday afternoon Zoom edition, and the market's trending up. We've held 20,000 with Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum's pumping up above, um, flirting with 1,300. So things are looking pretty good for a Friday. Let's go to the charts. Okay, you should be seeing my Bitcoin day chart with a range drawn. Yes. Now, this range is so tight that I've had to really expand my screen for you guys to see it. You know, if I reset my chart, you can barely see the range down here on the day chart. And, you know, if I do this, and it's really tough to see. So we're uh, got a 16% range going between about 22K. I'm sorry, 22.8, I believe. 22.2 and 18.8. Yeah, that's it. And we went down to the uh, 19K held with that bad CPI news from a couple of days ago. So I think that's really encouraging. Of course, uh, in the spare market, we're so, we're so desperate for good news. We're trying to put a spin on bad news to make it look good for us. But, uh, but really, that it didn't drop even further, I think, was, was over, overall a good thing, even, even if that's a little bit of spin. And we've had three straight. Uh, green candles on the day chart for Bitcoin. So it's going back, it's holding 20K, uh, flirting with 22 at some points. Uh, we did go, man, when, when did we hit? Uh, not quite a week ago, we were we were close to 22. But um, yeah, holding 20 and just staying in a decent range for a while will really help the altcoins that we like to treat, that we like to trade. Uh, speaking of altcoins, Let's look at Ethereum, uh, a tight range as well, between 1,000 and 1,280. Was, uh, did wick over the 1,280 briefly today. But uh, anyway, hanging in there, trending up. And overall, I think things are, are, are looking at least stable. If we could hold this range, I think we can make a nice recovery. But who knows what kind of mischief the world economies are gonna gonna dump on us and and regrettably and i've said it many times the crypto market and bitcoin seem to be more correlated to to the nasdaq than you know say gold regardless um you know we believe in it we're going to keep trading it so any questions or comments on the overall market uh, bitcoin and ethereum And actually one more thing, Craig and I were talking ahead of time, the crypto market cap dipped below 1 trillion during the, uh, the worst part of the bear market has uh, moved back up uh, over a trillion. So that's also encouraging. And I can't remember exactly where I heard that. I think it was the, uh, the crypto banter guys, uh, Ran and Sheldon and those people um, you know, I, I do subscribe to their Telegram and, and look at it from time to time. And I followed some of Sheldon's trades too. So you guys might want to check that out. Uh, Crypto banter, Sheldon, he's more of a chart range kind of guy where I like, you know, indicators and dips. So it just depends what you learn and what works for you. But, but that's, uh, that's good teaching as well. All right, um, if there's nothing else on the overall market, we'll go ahead and jump over to altcoin alert, see if we can find some trades. Okay, so the first score I like to do, we have some new people, so I should start from the beginning. When you log on to altcoin alert, you'll see usually the dashboard. I don't care for this. I wanna to go to altcoin radar and see all the information. So this has the, the different sentiment scores, and, uh, and the technical indicators through the elder impulse. And I like to, when those two align, those are coins I wanna look at. Uh, I wanna look at for potential trades. First thing I do though, is I look at the AA score. I'm gonna sort by AA score. I'm looking for values 80 and higher, and we don't have any today. So that's kind of a bummer. The highest is this coin Metro XCM. Seems like it's been here forever just holding at 74. We have XRP, just regular bullish at 69. That's not enough for me to look at in and of itself. So I go to my other sorts. Uh, 
I like long-term sentiment sorts and elder impulse daily sorts. Lately, the elder impulse daily sort has brought up more, more candidates than the long-term sentiment. And if you're not sure what this is, you can just hover over this question mark and it'll explain what it is. Uh, I just think of, this is the technical one. This is the, uh, you know, the word on the street, Twitter data. So when these two align, that's something I wanna look at. And I haven't seen this in a long time. The top seven, well, actually this one, our we've just changed. This was different uh, about an hour ago, but I'd say six of the top seven are coins I trade with from time to time and even frequently, you know, Matic, Uni, Aave, Quant. These I trade with some frequency, Curve and Arweave occasionally and Comp, probably somewhere in between. So we've got some good candidates to look at today. I've already got, I started looking at Matic earlier. I've got it open and I've got the news tab selected because this has had a big jump in the, on the hour chart. Go to that. Last couple of days, over 30%. And there's a news item here it says, you know, it's targeting $1. And there's a, a reference that Matic has a partnership with the Walt Disney Company. That's big news. You know, when, I, when a crypto has an actual use case with a large company like Disney, that's something you want to you wanna check out. Um, not financial advice, but this might be one you want to add to your bag. So in addition to day trading it, I'm not going to go through the details of this. And this had another article we looked at last week. This one here about collectible avatars on uh, Reddit is launching uh, like NFTs on Polygon. So, you know, those two news articles have really helped <laughs> you know, Maddox numbers in the last week. Okay, so we've looked at the one hour chart and let's go to the five minutes, see if we're gonna dip, probably not. No, we're above the, the SMA line. Um, this is not where I wanna enter a trade on the five minute chart. You can look at our support and resistance lines. I wanna get rid of divergence here. We'll look at that a little later. I see some short-term divert or uh, support right here between about 68 cents and 67, 68 cents. So you might want to put an alert there if it comes down tonight or tomorrow and get in there would be uh, one option. Right click, add your alert, uh, crossing. And I like to put my information source. So this would be my elder impulse sort. So that would be one type of alert to set to get in a good to get a good entry. And and then we could do one of our indicator sorts. For those I like to go to the 15 minute or later on the weekend. Sometimes I go on the 30 minute chart. We'll do the 15 because that's what I usually do on these uh, on these Zoom calls. I'm going to turn on my divergence. Divergence is simply a disagreement between the candle action and the uh, and the indicators. And you can download this indicator right here on TradingView. Type in divergence. And this is the one I like, divergence for many indicators version four. As you can see over 13,000 people have downloaded it. It'll, it has uh, divergences on popular Indicators like all the ones you see here, stochastic, RSI, MFI, you know, and then plus others, you know, MACD and, and momentum. And it shows you which ones, which indicators that the, the, the divergence occurs upon. I don't think it's very useful on the five minute chart. I think you have to be 15 minute or above. And as you can see, but you can't totally rely on it because it repaints. So that means you know, if uh, like the CCI shows up and then the numbers change and there's more of a divergence, that might disappear and show up over here. So um, got to keep that in mind. And let's see how the divergences have done on the long, on the long side. Uh, this one did really well 
course, you'd have to be up at 4.30 Pacific to, to do this one. I should trade in your sleep. Uh, divergence is helpful because it has kind of a predictive quality. You know, it's when the price action races ahead of, way ahead of the, well, somewhat ahead of the uh, indicators and the indicators need to catch up. And I can show you where, where the market's gonna go. You know, here's one here at um, you know, 3 p.m. yesterday. I made a 3.6% move. It's a good day trade. This one here, up about 2%, dipped again, went up, dipped again, went up. So if you'd have ridden this one to the top of the Bollinger Band, you get almost 3% in seven hours. You know, that's, that's a pretty good day trade. You know, if you're more experienced and you're using leverage, then you know you can get 10 to 20% on five to 10x on that. So bullish divergence has done pretty well in the recent recent past on Matic. But let's say you're you're new and you know I, I, did, I didn't deal with divergence until I'd been trading for about a year. So um, then we have these easier. I don't know why I have stochastic above these others. So let's move that. The money flow index. And the relative strength index, MFI, RSI are two of my favorites. There's a lot of duplication, but sometimes they disagree and some are more sensitive than the others. What I'm looking for on a long is the MFI to hit, come below this 20, this oversold area, and then shoot back up. Now I want to catch the cross back up. And as you can see, when that happens, it's happened here, actually before the divergence went sideways and then made a nice move. Uh, happened again here. And it went up to about 3%, dipped again, then came up here to about 4%. So those are two, two pretty good moves on the, uh, the EMFI. On the RSI, we're looking for a dip below the 30 level, considered consider the oversold and then coming back up. Uh, neither of those did that here. So the MFI seems to be the better indicator to catch these, these dips and recoveries. And if you want to set an alert on the MFI on the 15 minute chart, right click here, add alert on MFI, crossing up on the 20. Once per bar close, that way it'll be open until you cancel it. And then I'm going to put my information source, elder impulse sort, and off you go. I've already got this alert going. So on the 30 minute chart, I'm, I was a little more conservative. So I set mine on the 30. I wish I hadn't been because, um, yeah, I just missed it. Or maybe I should have put this at, instead of using the 20, put this up at the, at the 30 or 35 because I put mine at 25 and I just missed it. I would have caught this, this move here. Uh, so anyway, but the 15 is one I use the most. Uh, sometimes the 30 on the weekend, if I'm not confident of the direction of the market. You can do the same thing on the RSI if you want to use the 30 value, but that wasn't very useful in the recent past for Maddox. So. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but most of the, my my veterans on this call have heard it many times. So uh, if you're if you're new and didn't quite follow that, you might want to catch the replay and go through it again. When I'm learning new strategies, I have a kind of a routine. I go I, I watch it once just to watch it. I watch it a second time and take handwritten notes. I usually, usually watch it a third time and do type notes and keep those in a file on my computer. So. For those of you who are new, that's what I recommend for learning new stuff. Any questions or comments about Matic and the uh, the setup here? I, I have a quick one. So you use TradingView to look at all the indicators. Do you use a Bybit account to actually initiate the trade? If I'm trading on leverage, I do that on Bybit. If I'm trading spot, Occasionally on Bybit, but I'm more inclined to use, for this kind of trade. I'd more likely do it on Coinbase Pro or or KuCoin or or something like that. But um, okay, yeah. 
So you, then you're just kind of with, without the leverage part, you're just trading on a coin, watching it and using this predictability, whether it's going to go up or down. Right. Got it. Right. I traded spot trades only for probably a year and a half before I started doing leverage last year. So uh, that's what I recommend probably six months to a year uh, spot trading and, and getting good at it, getting consistent results before you go to leverage. But some people skip that and go straight to leverage. <laughs> I don't know. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I was curious if you're listening. <laughs> all right, little inside joke with Nicole and me. Um, all right, so anything else on Matic? Let's see what else we can find. Got Uni, Ave, Quant, CRV. I've got Ave up. Let's check it out. And uh, what I usually do is, and I've done this for the last couple of years, is I, I, I do a day analysis uh, of the market to see where it's been. Because I like retraces. I like dips. And I want, you know, as, as Bryce says on Crypt Nation, price has memory. And I want to see that price go back to where it was. So but it's almost pointless to do that now because most of the coins been beaten down 70, 80%. And if we do a quick look at Ave on the day chart, you know, we can see that it was over $400 in late October, you know, lost close to 90% and it's trending back up again. And this is a, we're seeing this on pretty much all the altcoins. Go to the hour chart that gives me a, a closer look. You know, I'm looking at the last 10 days or so, two weeks, Ave's up, you know, over 60%. Let's see if we have any Ave news. Not really. At least not on trading view. So this is an interesting chart. It took a, did a really nice dip. It looks like a two dip sequence here. One, two, and we didn't get the third dip. So I used to look for a MACD cross in these situations, but you know, I've got the stochastic RSI here, which is more sensitive, way more sensitive than the MACD and the MFI and the RSI. If all these are pointing up, I, I won't necessarily look for a third dip in this situation. So. Uh, had I been looking at this at uh, you know nine o'clock this morning when I was actually doing other things, I uh, could have caught this for a move to the SMA line of two point seven percent. If I'm looking for you know some sh some resistance to be my guide, like the retraces I was talking about a little bit ago, that could have been a five percent move. You know five percent three hours. It's a really good day trade. So that would have been a pretty nice setup. Currently, we're sitting on the SMA line. So it's not really giving us any direction in the short term. Got some support here if you want to rely on that. Uh, $88. And again, down here, at about 87 So somewhere in here on a retrace tonight or this weekend would could be a good entry point if you don't, don't want to deal with you know, divergence or indicators or anything like that. Just put your alert down here. Add alert, 87.1. It's the Elder Impulse sort again. And you're good to go. I've already got a different alert on Ave. I'll show you that in a moment. So our next option is our 15 minute with divergence and, and the indicators. So you can see the two recent bullish divergences have done really well. So this one goes off here, you know, 17% move. This one here, 7% you know, move. So I think I did. Uh, I did an MFI. 
MFI sort of, uh, or an alert on that one. I'll look at that. Yeah, here's the MFI uh, move. It actually wasn't that good though. That was last night. You know, it did dip. Went up 2.3%, about the same, about 3.7% here. Probably would have gotten out at one of those two places, thinking we're at, maybe we're at some kind of resistance here. You know, we haven't really gone above, you know, $94, $95 on Ave, on Ave yet. So curious to see if we can punch through that this weekend or if that's a, uh, going to be some resistance for it for a while. So if you want to do the MFI alert, right click on here, crossing up. And I don't see it hitting. It's like one of them hit 20 here. This one got close. Might want to go with 25 on this one. Once per bar close and you know elder impulse sort. I set one of these on the 30 minute chart. Uh, just if you don't want to be awakened in the night and you have trading view on your phone, then you might want to turn this off and then turn it back on in the morning. Um, or you can let it wake you up at three in the morning and, and, and trade it then. I've, I've done that before uh, many times last summer. Okay, any questions on Ave? I've got a question in the chat. Okay, Elaine's uh, got a, an article about trading view she likes. So go ahead and check that out in the chat. Okay, any questions on Ave? I think I asked it already. Uh, let's look at one more on this sort. And we'll try uh, one other sort and we'll wrap it up. So we've looked at Matic and Ave. Uh, let's look at compound. Very bullish, bullish on the long-term sentiment and the elder impulse comp. It's on my list. Could just click it here or you can type it comp USDT. I usually use Binance charts, but if you're trading on, and I, I don't think anyone here trades on Binance or very few, um, you might want to go to the KuCoin or I thought it was on Coinbase Pro. Oh, it's a USD on Coinbase Pro. Yeah. Let's look at that chart. Okay. On the day chart. Yeah, the same dip drop everything else has had on the hour. That's this is interesting. Some wild action here. Since the sixth, it's up 27%, gives all that back, up 30%, and heading down again. Some serious range action here on this one. Five minute chart. Uh, it's mostly in a squeeze, but about to about to bubble up. Could be a one, two, three dip. Not quite three percent between the Bollinger bands. Uh, you're already at where I would set a a price alert. So you might want to drop down to maybe fifty five, fifty four, fifty, something like that to uh, if, it, if it dips again and to reevaluate, right click on here, add alert, 54.5 and elder impulse sort and off you go. On the 15 minute, the indicators, This divergence did really well. This one, not as well. Uh, 
Okay, only up 1%. And MFI, this one did pretty well. And this one we don't know. So this is the current dip sequence we looked at on the five minute chart. So it's already dropped below the 20 on the 15 minute chart and it's hooking up. So we, we could catch a dip sequence on comp right now or very soon, next, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So if you got something, if you need to get away from your computer, don't want to watch it, you know, right click on MFI, crossing up, and you know the drill by now. Okay, any questions on comp? Okay. Now let's say you are a more experienced trader and you're on leverage, you want to short something. I mean, the volumes tend to go down over the weekend. Lower volume usually means lower prices. So you can reverse sort the AA score and find things that are bearish. Now, bear in mind, you have to find these on an exchange you know, that has leverage. So uh, Mina is on Bybit. I actually traded this a little while ago and did pretty well. There's probably a few others on here, but that one jumps out at me. And that's in the bearish range. So let's check that one out. Plunging down, this might be an all-time low. Yeah, we're at an all-time low now, which is kind of concerning for, for shorting. So I suggest you do so with low leverage, you know, below 5%. In the last hour, I mean, on the hour chart, it was 73 cents down to 60 cents and back up to 66 cents. So quite some pretty good movement there. Five minute. Looks like there's some, we're doing this instead of looking for support, we're looking for resistance. We wanna buy this at resistance ideally for a short. And I'm seeing that in this vicinity here around 68 and a half cents. So that could be a place for your, uh, your alert crossing. I wanna go crossing down. And this was an alert AA score, 33.3, I believe, and create. Oh, my bad, well, that's a, that's a price alert. So it's okay to put on the five minute. Doesn't matter what time frame you put a price alert on, it'll show up on all of them. So you see it's, it's on the 15 minute chart, it's on the hour chart. But if you do an indicator alert, it will not show up on the rest of them. It only shows up on the time frame you've, you've done that for. So if you wanna do an indicator alert on the 15 minute chart, you can see, well, let's look at divergence first, bearish divergence. Um, they haven't done real well. Well, this one did poorly and this one did well. Came down, you know, 3%. I usually do 2x leverage anymore on shorts. I've just been burned too bad. You guys have heard my horror stories on short trades. So um, down a little bit on that one. Well, I'm not going to go through them all. They're only dropping a little bit. So I don't know if divergence is the best way to go. On our MFI sort, we were looking for overbought, so going above 80 on the MFI and then dropping below. So we have that situation here. Let's 
So this one goes above the MFI 80, comes down about 5 p.m., get in around here, and eventually, you know, 3%. Say on 2x leverage, it's a 6% move in nine hours. That's a, that's a good day trade. And we've got another one here that goes above and comes back down. This one does not do that well. Well, actually, if you got out at the exact right time, you know, 2%, you know, it's a pretty good move times <laughs> two or three X leverage. But it goes against you pretty fast. You could have gotten out here with a little bit of profit. And you see it's seesawing up. Yeah, probably still be in this trade. Maybe get out at this point here this morning just because I'm tired of looking at it. Um, and so those are the two MFI options. And again, if you wanna do this one on an indicator, add an alert on the MFI, set it crossing up or crossing down. Our value is 80. Once per bar close and AA 3.3. That's how you do that. Any questions on a potential MENA short? All right, guys. Well, do one more quick sort just to show you some options on altcoin alert. You can also sort uh, you know, this way, this one hour projected range. I haven't talked about this in a while. Just because I think the ranges are You know, the average range is in the middle, like the uh, on the ocean here, the upper is 3.37, the lower is 0.66. When the market was pumping more, I used this a lot more. I haven't used it in several months, but a few new folks, you know, if this, if this range holds then some of these altcoins are gonna take off and, and this might be something you wanna look at. When the upper and the lower are nearly identical though, I don't know if it's, if it's, that, if it's that useful, but, but this one here on Celsius, or <laughs> that one's been in the news for, for negative reasons. I'm not sure if you want to do anything with that. But um, so that's one way to sort. Another way we like to sort is a 24 hour, 24 hour range and look for stuff that's really been beaten down, but that but we know is quality and should come back. Uh, I'm not really seeing anything like that here. Maybe synthetics. curve would be two, two to look at that um, you might want to set alerts like I've described on the others. Okay. All right, I'm being asked, do I have any videos about how to do a leverage buy in Bybit? I don't think so. Uh, but that's a pretty simple, you know, Google search, how to, you know, how, I, I, I looked, when I first signed up for Bit, for Bybit, I looked at um, Carl, I forgot his name. He's something Swedish or Norwegian or something. Uh, so if you look up Carl Bybit, you should be able to find that video and it's, it's pretty detailed. So that would be a good option for you. Okay, well, that's about all I have for altcoin alert. Any questions about this or the overall market? All right, guys, um, I will uh, sign off here. And for those of you on the recording, please check out the opportunities listed in the comments below. If you're, uh, if you're on live, I really appreciate you uh, joining me on a Friday afternoon. And we'll, uh, we'll see you guys hopefully on Monday. Uh, those of you in carbon, hang around. We'll do the, uh, the, car the carbon webinar next. Um, have a good one.